Never has there been a bigger need for data collection. Never has there been a bigger need for industrial automation. And never has there been a bigger need for a chalk talk about Industry 4.0. That's right, my friends. We're talking about the next wave of the industrial revolution in this here Chalk Talk. And you know what Industry 4.0 cannot do without? Single pair Ethernet. And my voice, apparently. <laughs> so for today's and tomorrow's smart factories, we need to make sure our communication connections, our actuators, our sensors, and our devices are all talking nicely together and to the cloud. And we need to keep interoperability, processing, and analytics in mind at all times. And don't even get me started with EMI reduction, field rates, and communication protocols. Phew. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. The key to solving all of those problems I just mentioned may be found in single-pair Ethernet. Copper to the rescue once again. My guests are Peter Polak and Mackenzie Reed from Harding, and we're delving into the world of single-pair Ethernet. We're taking a closer look at what single-pair Ethernet buys us as engineers, it brings you power, too. <laughs> and why standardization is key in this arena. And also, what the future looks like for this new physical media. All right, let's get started. And don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Harding's single-pair Ethernet solutions. Hi, Mackenzie and Peter. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me here. So first off, Mackenzie, tell me a little bit about Harding for those of my audience who may not be familiar. Sure. So Harding was founded back in 1945. We have five North American locations all across the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. We also have just over 5,000 employees globally in the Harding organization. We have 14 production plants with full manufacturing capabilities. 44 sales offices all across the globe. Our headquarters was founded in Espelkamp, Germany, and it's actually still there. And we are still 100% owned by the Harding family. So there on the left, you can see the second generation of Mr. and Mrs. Harding, and now the third generation of Philip Harding and Marissa Harding. 1945. So you guys are celebrating your 75th anniversary, right? Yeah. So we've been innovating solutions for the industrial revolutions back since the late 1950s. So in 1945, Harding was established. In the late 1950s, we patented and started producing the first product, which is called Han, which is that rectangular connector. And any connector that you see in the market that is rectangular is a variation of that first Harding Han connector. So we've been innovating the product, modernizing it, and expanding the portfolio since the 1960s. But the product that was created back then has truly been the industrial standard since then. In the 1990s, we added to that Han line, creating the modular lines that you can see in the image, where you can load in individual modules, and it truly allows you to create one single connector for data signal and power all loaded into one solution. In the 2000s, we expanded our board level portfolio, namely within the pre-link and push-pull solutions. We also developed a full RFID line back in the 2000s. And then when we moved into the 2010s, we started creating much more smart solutions. So we've been integrating smart solutions into the Han connector itself. So IAOT solutions into that connector, as well as our Mika product, which is an open source edge device for industrial applications. So really the intent of that one is to take in inputs and outputs at the edge level to bring IAOT functionality to some machinery that's never been connected to smart solutions. It's never been connected to a cloud. People have never gathered data from these products. And also we've outfitted our RFID technology on that solution as well. So finally, today, what we're here to talk about is our newest innovation and one of the products that we're very excited about, which is our T1 industrial product, which fits into the world of single pair Ethernet. All right. Give me a little bit more detail about Harding's solutions. Sure. So we have two major divisions, which is electrical and electronics. Electrical is our large rectangular Han connector and that entire product family that I brought up. The electronic product line is more so of the board level connectors and all of the industrial connectivity down at the board level, as well as the interface connectors that mate up with those board level connectors. 
We also have hard and customized solutions, which is complex cable assemblies, some box builds. And really, we invite customers to come to us with just the shred of an idea, and we'll create a full engineered solution for them. As I brought up before, we launched the Mika platform recently, which is an open source edge device. We've been getting into the e-mobility sector just because of all the exponential increases that are happening here in North America, as well as the world with e-mobility. We've been in the business of specialized machines and tooling for a long time. That's more of our European business, but we do have some customers here in the U.S. as well. And then finally, one technology that's very cool and not talked about very much is our 3D MID technology. So really, that's a 3D PCB that's created to form around the customer's product. So instead of the customer designing their product around the board, we design the board around the product. So we're able to come up with very complex and interesting designs and 3D technology for PCB layouts. Okay, but we're here to talk about Ethernet. Today, we're going to be talking about single-pair Ethernet, what it is, what it does, why people are interested, and what Harding has done within the single-pair Ethernet space so far. Okay, let's break down some of the types of Ethernet and how they're currently used to communicate in the industry. Sure. So the first one that everyone's very familiar with is Wi-Fi. We all use Wi-Fi in our homes. Wi-Fi is used in some situations in industrial manufacturing as well. Another one, which is less known but very cool, is Li-Fi, which is actually using light and wireless technology together. So it's light that's doing data transmission independent of cabling. The use cases for this right now are pretty limited and very specialized, but still very cool technology to have out there in industrial environments. The one that's more well known for light and data is fiber optic solutions, which achieve the same result of using data across light, but it's used within the cable itself. And then the industry standards, especially for Ethernet, are copper, two pair and four pair solutions. So your industrial Ethernet as it exists today is four twisted pairs. You know, an RJ45 connector that's used both commercially and industrially is using eight wires right now for Ethernet transmission. But what we're here to talk about today is the new physical media, which is single-pair Ethernet. Okay, so how does single-pair Ethernet compare to the two- and four-pair Ethernet we're currently using? So single-pair Ethernet is just truly one twisted pair of two wires. Fast Ethernet was using a total of four wires in the past for 100 megabit speeds. Uh, Gigabit is using eight total wires for between 250 megabit to multi-gigabit speed. And single pair Ethernet is able to achieve Ethernet technology across each individual wire. It's transmitting and receiving data at the same time. So what kinds of speeds are we really talking about here? So the one that's most recently uh, completed and will be published in 2020 is within the standard group IEEE and the specialized group 802.3CG. And they've standardized single pair Ethernet for 10 megabit per second across a thousand meters. So this is very advantageous for the industrial market because really there was very limited technology that was able to do this before single pair Ethernet, mostly over fiber optic, which is a very delicate solution. And industrial Ethernet using copper is much more robust. Also, in the past, the IEEE subgroups, including 802.3BW, have certified 100 megabit per second single pair Ethernet. They've also certified within 802.3BP, one gigabit per second across 40 meters. And then multi-gigabit speed is being worked on within the subgroup 802.3CH for some limited ranges, but new projects are being opened up right now across all the different speeds. So one of the ones that we're going to be involved in within IEEE is for 100 megabit per second from 200 to 500 meters gigabit speed from 150 to 200 meters, and multi-gigabit speed up to 50 meters. And Harding's done some independent testing of single-pair Ethernet, and we believe that these limits can be pushed even further, and that's what we're going to be investigating within these IEEE groups. So why exactly are industrial markets interested in single-pair Ethernet? Really what single-pair Ethernet is able to do is it's able to bring copper Ethernet functionality down to the device level in a cost-effective and easy way for the first time, and it includes power. So currently in industrial environments, you have your sensor and actuator level, which is doing all the computation and is working with the physical products in the field. That's pushing data up to the input and output level. And in the industrial automation example, that's where PLCs, drives, HMIs, that's where all of those products sit. 
And then once you get a level higher, those are the main control rooms. That's where you have controls engineers monitoring an entire manufacturing environment and really aggregating all that data, which is then pushed up one final level up to the cloud system. That cloud can either be on site or off site of the manufacturing facility, but that's where all the most critical data is going. So based on what everyone thinks is happening with IAOT or Industry 4.0, all of the sensor and actuators and individual devices at the plant floor level are now becoming smart. So to do that, they need communications connections. And the most cost effective way is to do that with single pair Ethernet now that we've made these huge strides in the market. So these sensors, actuators and devices will all be talking to each other. That data will still be pushed up to aggregation devices like PLCs and drives and, you know, the main control rooms. But really, we see this more as an open loop system in the future with all of these devices being interoperable and talking to each other and then pushing everything up to the analytical level as the very last stage. So we have some industry data that has backed up these claims with the industrial Ethernet market being worth $25 billion as of 2018. It's expected to grow to $70 billion by 2025 with a 13% compound annual growth rate. And globally, last year, industrial Ethernet grew from 52% global market share to 59% global market share. For the first time ever, field bus applications actually decreased 5% from 40% global market share to 35 So we're seeing that the market truly is moving in the direction of industrial Ethernet. There is also a small wireless market that's growing within its own range, but it makes up about 6% of the global market share. And also, we've done some research and SIP-based protocols pretty much dominate in the Americas, mostly using Ethernet IP applications. Within Europe, it's more of a field bus and industrial Ethernet split. And then once you get to the Asian markets, you see a very healthy spread of a whole bunch of different industrial protocols for communication. So why is single pair Ethernet a good fit for all of these industrial applications? The market was looking to manufacturers, to these standards groups specifically, and saying, we want something that covers every type of communication application that we have. So we need something that goes long run, but is very low speed. We need something that's higher speed, but it doesn't go as long of a distance. And we don't want to use all of these different common industrial protocols or field bus applications to achieve this. So really, they were looking for something that was going to cover this entire market. And what happened was the development of especially 10Base T1L began because 10Base T1L goes from 0.001 megabit per second up to 10 megabit per second from zero meter to 1000 meters right now. In the future, we're going to be testing that for even longer distances, but this is the one that's been standardized and certified within IEEE as of this year, and they'll be releasing that document this year. Okay, cool. So what is this really going to buy us? So really taking the step forward into single pair Ethernet is a big leap for the market, but there's a lot of return on investment and there's a lot of existing things that already exist in the market that can be used to support single pair Ethernet. So single pair Ethernet is just a physical layer advancement. It's still going to be using industrial Ethernet protocols. So your TCP, IP, Modbus, Ethercat, CC Link, all of that stuff will still be usable across single pair Ethernet. It's just really going from eight wire down to two wire. We're also through power over data line, you're able to bring power down to the industrial device for the first time. So instead of having to run separate power and use a power supply, that will be done over single pair Ethernet as well, which is a huge advancement for device manufacturers that have to have two connections and an external power supply. Now you'll get that with one standardized connection. The simplicity of going to industrial Ethernet is another great thing because currently in industrial applications, they may be using multiple different types of protocols and you have to use media converters. You have to schedule things on your network and pause them so that you can communicate with one protocol and then move back to the other protocol. So using just one common industrial Ethernet protocol is advantageous for the market. Physically, the size of material will be reduced going down to two wires from eight wires. You're saving 75% of copper. The magnetics and the chipsets on the board will decrease for the same reason. So just the physical media will decrease, which will increase cost savings. 
in comparison of wireless protocols, which require licensing and are really only regional. This is a global open license solution. So you don't have to have a license to use industrial Ethernet protocols. And the same industrial Ethernet could be used in North America or in Europe or really anywhere. By going from eight wire to two wire, you really are reducing the electromagnetic interference just because you're using less physical media again. And that was one of the main points of developing single pair Ethernet in the first place was longer run and reducing EMI. Some standard cables that are already out in the market can be reused depending on the speed and distance that you're using. So cable manufacturers are looking at single pair Ethernet specific connectors and cables but some of the physical cable media that's out there can still be used. And then finally, single pair Ethernet and copper Ethernet connections in general for the first time using the thousand meter distance can go into harsh and hazardous locations. Typically, those are currently using fiber optic solutions because of the long run capabilities. But now you'll be able to use copper solutions into those harsh environments which all leads to decreased cost and increased value for not only the OEMs that are making the products, but the end customers themselves. Okay, so what does the standardization look like for single pair Ethernet? What are the standardization organizations doing here? The standardization organizations, they were kind of put to task by the industrial markets themselves to come up with common standard protocols to accept single pair Ethernet. Harding itself is very well versed in standardization. We've set standards since the 1960s and we've abided by global standards since our founding and since we've become a market leader in industrial connectivity. So, you know, we sit on multiple global standards boards across the world and we actively lead within standards organizations, especially when it's coming towards single pair Ethernet. Specifically, when we're talking about SPE, the two standards organizations that really led some standardization between 2016 and now were TIA and ISO IEC. So they have certified two different connection methods, one for enterprise and building and the other for industrial and heavy industrial. Okay, so what's the difference between the enterprise and industrial Ethernet standards? So the enterprise one is one that's you know similar to an RJ45 connector, if you're familiar with that. And it's really used for enterprise application and for building automation. It's not as robust of a solution. It's not really intended for industrial use cases. And that's what is considered MICE 1, which is for enterprise and building automation. MICE 2 and MICE 3 are for industrial and heavy industrial purposes. And that's really where Harding stepped in and we created a solution, especially for industrial and heavy industrial applications. So we created one common mating interface that can be used from IP20 environments all the way up to very harsh IP65 and 67 environments. So the mating interface itself never changes, just the outside of the connector changes based on the IP rating that's needed. And those two standards organizations have recognized both connectors. And the next one, as I said, that's being published this year is 802.3CG from IEEE, which also recognizes both connectors. So it sounds like some things have already been done, but what else needs to happen within these standards organizations? Great progress has already been made. The official name of the Harding-specific connector within these standards organizations is IEC 63171-6. And that is the first globally approved connectivity standard for industrial applications. The IEEE 802.3CG group references that number in their design specification. And as I said, that document is going to be published this year in 2020. The things that have already happened have been tremendous. We're currently working with other global standards organizations to expand these standards and certifications and make sure that those two connectors that I was talking about, the enterprise version as well as the industrial version, are added to more global standards organization specifications moving forward. And OEMs really are already embracing both solutions. So we're working directly with OEMs here in North America on single pair Ethernet designs. And we're acting not only as partners and manufacturers, but kind of consultants on the entire single pair Ethernet market and all of the needs that come with single pair Ethernet technology. All right, let's bring it back to Harding. So, Peter, tell me about what you guys are doing in this space. Absolutely. So back in 2015, Harding saw a significant potential for single-pair Ethernet technology in the industrial automation market. 
Back then, in 2015, the single pair Ethernet technology was mainly discussed for automotive applications. However, Harding saw that this technology could be extremely applicable when it comes to industrial markets, such as industrial automation and robotics and machinery. And this led to the R&D project to develop an optimized connectivity solution that would be more compact and more robust compared to a traditional RJ45 products. So here's a nice picture that probably a lot of us saw and had an issue with. So breaking the standard RG45 tabs, the most common way to fix it is to actually use a, a simple zip tie. This might be a quite good solution when we are trying to fix something in our house or maybe in the office, but absolutely not acceptable when we're trying to do some fixes in the uh, industrial applications. So the big push from Harding was to develop something that's definitely more robust and will avoid issues like that, specifically for the industrial use. So also during this R&D project and throughout the standardization process, Harding worked with a lot of different industry leaders to really develop and tailor solutions specifically to the demanding industrial markets to have a connector for single pair Ethernet that would be applicable to many different use cases within the industrial applications. So this led to development of few different single pair Ethernet connectors or T1 connectors as we call them at Harding. So products for IP20 applications IP54 and IP6567 using different hoods and housings. So how were you able to achieve all of these versions? So the way we designed our solution was to use a common data container. So the idea is to use the same exact mating phase for the T1 connector, but then close it into a different housing. So whether we use IP20 version or IP6567 version, we use exactly the same mating phase and data container. We simply just change the protective housing to allow that better protection rating. And on top of that, another great feature that came out of that was the fact that you can actually plug in IP20 version of the connector to IP6567 receptacle. And this can be extremely useful when you think about just doing a simple quick connection in the field of someone just wants to plug in to download or upload something. They don't have to use a specialized IP67 cable. They can just do it with a simple IP20 common plug. And this will cover the different speeds and lengths we're talking about with Mackenzie earlier? Absolutely. So another great feature that Harding designed was the ability for each connector to be fully compatible with different cables for single pair Ethernet. So as Mackenzie mentioned earlier in our presentation, single pair Ethernet has different speeds and different lengths. So for example, in order to run the cable all the way to 1000 meters, you need definitely a thicker conductor. Therefore, the cable itself will be much thicker than, let's say, cable that's normally used for 10 meter communication. So the great feature with the Harding connector is the fact that you can use different cables and still use the same connectors. You don't have to pick different part numbers. You can just stick with one single connector and that can accommodate different cable thicknesses. Okay, so can we get into some detail about the technical characteristics here? Absolutely. So if we look at the electrical performance of our solution, our connector is rated for 60 volts and also rated for 4 amps at 60 Celsius degrees or 1.5 amp at 85 Celsius degrees. As far as the voltage proof, we are rated for 1000 volts pin to pin and also 2250 volts pin to shield. And also T1 solution is fully compatible with the power over data line standard. So can you give me some more detail about this power over data line? So think about this particular technology as a different version of power over Ethernet, commonly known as PoE. So power over Ethernet is basically a technology that allows you to send power and data using the same Ethernet cable. So user can power uh, remote devices and send data to these devices using just one single cable. The difference is for power over Ethernet, you have to utilize either four wires or eight wires. And since we are using single wire or single pair technology, power over data line was developed to send power and data over one single twisted pair. So basically it's the same idea, just a slightly different execution. So if we go further into our technical parameters, Harding solution was optimized for high frequency performance. So the bandwidth is at 600 megahertz and the data rates that we can achieve currently are for one gigabit per second. So again, as Mackenzie mentioned, one gigabit is currently the highest speed that's standardized, but also Harding solution due to its great high frequency performance can also be used for future multi-gig performance. So up to 10 gigabit per second. And this is really achieved thanks to, again, very optimized design and the symmetrical design of the mating phase with parallel arrangements of the contacts to the printed circuit board. And this is very important because you have to have the identical length of each pin for the signal path to prevent any runtime differences of the signal. So again, very highly optimized design for this use case. All right. So tell me more about the mating cycles based on the environment. Absolutely. So for the IP20 version, 
we can achieve at least 1,000 mating cycles. So again, truly high mating cycle solution for multiple different applications. And this is really achieved due to the very good design of the contacts itself. These are very high reliability contacts designed with very secure mating with two contact points per contact. The IP6567 solution, which is enclosed either in M8 or M12 housings, can achieve up to 100 mating cycles. And this is mainly due to the fact that the housings itself for M8 or M12 are rated for 100 mating cycles. And also going back to the MICE performance, as Mackenzie mentioned, being that this is a MICE 2 and MICE 3 category connector, we had to achieve a wide range of temperature. So Harding solution is rated for minus 40C to plus 85C with, again, different IP ratings also rated for high shotgun vibration category. And also the EMC characteristics are also in accordance with the E3 for all different connector variants. So Harding developed the connectors and the cabling. Do you guys have anything else for single pair Ethernet? Absolutely. So in addition to uh, the components like connectors and also the cable, Harding has also designed first single pair Ethernet devices. So here we have some examples of an unmanaged Ethernet switch that has five T1 ports rated at uh, 100 megabit per second and two RG45 ports. Again, device works with 24 volts, is rated for minus 40 to plus 70 C, and the main idea is to combine the standard Ethernet, eight or four wire Ethernet with the single per Ethernet. We also did develop a simple media converter that you can really go from the network of eight and four wire Ethernet to a single per Ethernet very easily. So we did that as an addition to the connector and the cabling portfolio to allow the first adapters to have an easy way to adapt single per Ethernet technology to go between the standard Ethernet to the single per Ethernet. This was so cool. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay, Mackenzie, let's look into your crystal ball and tell me where is the future headed for single pair Ethernet? Sure. Yeah. So as Peter shared, we've already developed some great stuff with the connector itself, as well as with the unmanaged switch and the media converter. But Harding has identified that while we have great products out, while our partners have great products that are already out and that single pair Ethernet is ready for the industrial market, that more collaboration and more development is needed. So we've created a whole ecosystem with single pair Ethernet technology being at the center of it. But it's also made up of all the standards organizations all the individual single pair Ethernet components, the devices that those components will go into, and then the end user applications in the industrial market. So whether that's energy, um, transportation, automation, machinery, robotics, all of that kind of stuff, just the end application of what we'll be using single pair Ethernet. So we've identified that, you know, there are great chipsets and magnetics and all the things that encompass the ecosystem already in the market that more development is needed for more SPE chip manufacturers, more magnetics manufacturers, new developments to really unlock the potential of power over data line. We're constantly adding to the product roadmap for single pair Ethernet technology and the T1 industrial product that Peter talked about. And then we're forging partnerships with cable manufacturers to work with them and within you know the technology of the connector and pair that with the cable that's being specifically designed for single pair Ethernet. So what specific steps are we looking at to build up this ecosystem you've been talking about? Yeah, so we actually launched in partnership with seven companies, including Harding, the Single Pair Ethernet Partner Network in 2019. So it was launched last September with the seven founding members, and it's already up to over, I think we just hit 18 members as of the last few days. So, you know, between September 2019 and when we're recording this, there's been very good increase in the market and adoption of the SP Partner Network. Okay, so what's the Partner Network hoping to achieve? Really, the Partner Network aims to just push the technology. So this is an independent network of the seven founding members. And the aim here is to collaborate and to really push single pair Ethernet technology forward. So that's developing the individual components that we were talking about with the chipsets, magnetics, the connectors, the cables, also going out to the market and end users and getting them comfortable with single pair Ethernet technology. So both globally and here in North America, there are training events that are going on currently just to educate the market if they're not already up to speed of what single pair Ethernet is and the use cases of why they should use single pair Ethernet in their next generation designs. We also want to provide clarity. We want to engage with all standards organizations globally to really come up with industrial standards that everyone can abide by. And really, you know, we didn't touch on it earlier with the standards organizations themselves, but 
in our market that we're currently in, no one can really be dedicated to one thing 100% anymore. And a lot of, especially younger design engineers are coming in and they're looking for guidance of, okay, I've been tasked with helping out on this next generation design. What connectivity solution should I use and what technology should I be using? And so that's why IEEE, IEC, TIA, all of those global standards organizations are putting especially these connector standards in place saying, if you're using single pair ethernet for this purpose, use this connector. And that's really what the partner network is really trying to do is share that awareness, set these standards and collaborate on products to push the technology forward for the betterment of the manufacturing and industrial markets. Very cool. All right. Well, where should I go for more information? So the Partner Network has its own website for all the information that's related to the single-payer Ethernet Partner Network, the founding members, the aim of the group, how you can join places where the Partner Network is going to be giving these events that I talked about. And that's at single-pair-ethernet.com. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Mackenzie and Peter. You're very welcome. And again, thank you for having me here. Thank you for having me. It was a great experience. And I hope that we shared a little bit more about the light and the innovations within single pair Ethernet and what Harding's doing. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Harding's single pair Ethernet solutions. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.